we purposely didn't look at Europe because we knew they were so much further ahead than us. The first safe route to school program that we ever found was in Odense in Denmark in 1974. Um, and they're so much further ahead than us. So we looked at countries that were demographically similar and geographically similar with the same levels of car driving, the same types of issues around heart disease, stroke, diabetes, those kinds of things. And um, we turned, we created the best practice document. It is now available on our website. We actually just had it updated this spring, so it is fairly current. Um, and we got a grant from the Public Health Agency of Canada to take that document and the recommendations that we created and turn it into a pilot project. So that's what we've been delivering for the last, well, I guess since 2007, 2008, we started that pilot project in four provinces, and now it's across the country, thanks to a grant from the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer. And I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow, so I don't want to give too much away. Um, next slide. So as we move through this history, yeah, 2007 was a very, very busy year. Um, Jackie already mentioned that uh, one of the things I wanted to do after that Copenhagen conference was try to do something to uh, get more things going. And so I sat down with the city of Toronto, who I knew were writing a pedestrian plan. They'd been talking about this damn pedestrian plan for about five years, and I hadn't seen a word of it on paper. So I said, you know, do you really want to do this pedestrian plan, and why not do it and announce it at an international conference for walking. And they thought that was a brilliant idea. It turned out the plan wasn't quite ready. What they actually did introduce was a draft, but I did get them to co-partner to co with Green Communities Canada to bring this conference to Canada. This was the first time it had been to Canada. The second time in North America, it had previously been in Portland in 2003. Um, so we worked on this, and I said, you know, we need to make this more than just a conference. You know, it's great, everyone comes together for three days, and they all, sit around and talk about walking and pat themselves on the back and get all inspired and go back to their desks and do nothing. What we want is to really create some momentum here. So we came up with this idea with Walk 21 to do this walkability roadshow. So we worked, most of our funding for this came from Ontario, but we got a little bit of extra money from Environment Canada, and so we made it national by bringing in Halifax Regional Municipality. So we had nine communities in Ontario and Halifax, um, which, was, which was good, it was a start. And what we did was we took a team of international experts into these communities to just see how walkable they were. But first we benchmarked them against the International Charter for Walking. We can actually go to the next slide. Just keep going. There. This is the International Charter for Walking. It's on walk21.com. And this is just the little first page of it. But those eight principles that you see there tie very nicely into every aspect, every age group, every ability, everything that you need to do to make walking count. You could take those eight principles and you could put them next to that other slide that we saw from that Australian Heart Institute and they would mesh perfectly. If you're doing all of these things, or all seven things, then number eight is going to be easy. You're gonna create a culture of walking. So we worked with these communities and we benchmarked them against these eight principles. And then we took our team of experts into the communities. We spent two days in each community. We met with key decision makers, the mayors, the councillors, the, the CFOs of, of the communities. Um, we did professional training with all of their engineers. We brought together all of the people from the municipality who actually told us that they'd never met before. The health department and the planners and the transportation engineers. When we asked them who was responsible for walking, Nobody put up their hand. We asked them that at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, when we asked that question again, they all put up their hands because they realized that they all have something to do with walking. And I think the biggest breakthrough for us was breaking down the silos so that the people who are working in health and who are concerned about physical activity levels but understand that people can't be physically active if the built environment doesn't allow them to be so, we're now talking with the planners and the engineers who have the ability to change that, and who have the ability to change those plans. And so this was really the aha moment. It was, it was quite amazing. We can actually go back now to the other slide. The one before, good. So that was the road show, and uh, we've gone on to continue to do that work. We've now worked with about 
17 communities and the case studies for that are on our Canada Walks website if you want to see them. And we stay in touch with each of those communities to see how they're doing. And I'll show you one in a moment. Um, now, my friend and colleague Arthur Orsini is here today and he is, of course, going to be your facilitator for the next day and a half. Um, I brought Arthur into the War 21 conference because I really wanted to involve youth. You know, that high school age group that always gets forgotten, everybody thinks that they know what youth are thinking and, and what they need, but nobody ever bothers to ask them. But Arthur has done a lot of work with that particular age group. And so we got permission to, uh, to actually have a youth forum during the War 21 conference. So it was just for them and Arthur facilitated that, and all of that information on what we did and how it worked out is also on the website. So that was really exciting because that never happened before at a War 21 conference. And because we like to keep busy, um, we, we decided that we would take on the Western Australia Guinness World Record for the largest number of people walking one kilometer at the same time. We decided to do it on International Water School Day 2007, which was also the Wednesday of the conference. So we'd have all these international participants at this conference, and we could actually go for a walk at, it was 12 o'clock, I think. Yeah, 12 o'clock in Toronto, because it all had to, it took place across Canada. Um, we beat the record, and we still have the record. No one's beaten it yet. So it was 231,635 people all walking together one kilometer at the same time. What was interesting about that and the biggest feedback we got was that people's perception of distance is really bizarre. People were coming back and saying, it only took 15 minutes, but it was a kilometer. Because people think a kilometer is a really long way. But when they actually set out to do it, many people went on and walked two or three kilometers because they couldn't believe that they actually just walked a kilometer because it took so little. So it was a really good exercise in perception. And I must say, we really did get walking on the map. At this year's past, <coughs> the past conference, which took place in The Hague in November, there were 30 people from Canada. Yes, it was great. And this year, the conference is in Vancouver. So all of you, and the call for papers is out right now. You have till February 28th, I believe, to put in a paper. So if you're doing anything exciting around walking and walkability in your community, Go to walk21.com and click on conferences and get an abstract submitted. Um, I'll look forward to having more drinks with you in that Cooper. Um, the next slide is one of the communities that we've worked with. Now, I started working with this community. This is in Bradford, Ontario. We started working with them on Safe Routes to School a few years ago. And they were one of our nine communities that were involved with the roadshow. And the picture that you see over here was is the same space that you see here and here. And Bradford had a reputation for being a war zone. In fact, it was used in a lot of war movies, their downtown, because it was so horrible. It was really nasty and scary and everything. We, you know, when they talk in American cities about the hole in the donut, this was Bradford. Um, but as you can see, it's changed completely. And they've done many, many things to change it. And I'm not taking responsibility for what they've done in Brantford. But they signed the International Charter. They just, they just had a new municipal council who's also now signed the charter, so the good work continues. They benchmarked against the eight principles. The planners that were working on their downtown revitalization went back and took a look at their plans for walking after the roadshow and changed them based on what they had heard from our team. And it's amazing. I mean, this community is just soaring. So if, if you